Kinetic energy, the energy stored in moving objects. Uh, sometimes we use a half mass times speed squared. It doesn't really matter if you use the word speed or velocity. What it is is how quickly something's moving and then we need to make sure that we square it. So for the first one, I just put the numbers into this equation to get these values. And actually what it shows is that from going from A to B, we've doubled the mass and we've doubled the kinetic energy. But if we had the same mass of three and we doubled the speed the speed or velocity from 4 to 8, then the actual value of kinetic energy goes up by a factor of 4. So the mass and the kinetic energy is this linear relationship. You double this, you double that. But when you double the velocity, we get 4 times the kinetic energy, and this is a squared relationship. Now the other thing I did was I rearranged the equations uh, to say that m equals 2ek over v squared, or v is equal to 2ek over m square rooted. Okay, this is where it gets a little bit tricky because what we have is a squared term and sometimes we want to find the velocity, uh, maybe we'd be given other things in the question. So, for this one over here, um, all of our raw data has been given to three significant figures and so are our answers. I used the appropriate equation, I put in the numbers, and then even when I got an answer like nine, I still wrote it to three significant figures, so that would be 9.00. Okay, so we've got three significant figures for all of that data. On the other side, um, we looked at a question to do with a tennis ball. The first one you've got to remember to convert from grams into kilograms, because we always use kilograms for our mass, and this gave me a value of 51 joules. But for the next question, I used my value of 51.156, in my next calculation. So although this might be my appropriate rounded down answer to two significant figures, like the raw data in the question, I still use my calculated value for subsequent calculations. And this gave a value of 59 meters per second. And then when we looked at the tennis ball compared to the baseball, um, again, I just looked at the kinetic energy of the tennis ball. I used this value in this equation to get the final speed of that baseball as 30 meters per second. And the next thing, we looked at some really big values. This is what happens uh, maybe when we're looking at things in space. So one ton is a thousand kilograms. So we had to convert this mass in tons and I multiplied it by 10 to the three to show that we converted it into kilograms. And then it had a speed of 7.66 kilometers per second. That's incredible, that's 7,660 meters per second. So I put these numbers in to find that standard form was the only way I could show my answer because it was so big. So 1.23 times 10 to the 13 joules. And then I did the same kind of thing for the stationary, so the geostationary satellite. So 10 to the 10 joules. And then this one here is about a ratio. So all I did was I looked at this value compared to this value which gives the ratio of 608 to one. That means this number is 608 times bigger than this number. And then for the very last bit, I just used the data that we had up here. So um, the asteroid's mass, well, mass is two times the kinetic energy over V squared. So I used this value up here, and I used the, the, the value that I had on my calculator. I divided it by this speed that we had over here, and then that gave me a value of 690.7, so 691 kilograms to three significant figures just like the raw data in the question. So, some tricky questions here, but if you can do this, you can do anything at GCSE. Um, these questions about kinetic energy, they do get a bit tricky because we have a V squared in the actual equation.